Look, I think Vince, in my mind, would use him as like a manager. Like right. a, somebody a talking, like the next Paul Heyman or something yeah. like that. Look, right. I know it was the kid's dream. To, and I met the kid, too. I spent a day with him uh, at an autograph signing. And he was a pleasure. And he was respectful. And I loved it. And I, and I loved the kid. What's going on, everybody? This is Dr. Chris Featherstone here for yet another episode of the Wrestling Outlaws with the, the beep Outlaws. Beep beep. Yes, with the... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the yes. pellet gun was a little, uh, little, little weak today. I mean, I think we it's need all to, right. You know, I've been well. Bit. I've been sick. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, not you. The pellet oh, my gun bad. My bad. Yes, <laughs> indeed, <no. laughs> Here we go. We got Road Dog in the building. Road Dog oh, Brian James. Know. We got Vince Russo in the building. Uh, we've got another uh, week of topics to talk about. So let's uh, let's bring that pellet gun out and shoot from the hip, ladies and gentlemen. Would pew, MJ- pew. Oh, there sorry. it is right there. Uh, <laughs> would MJF be a success in a WWE? Uh, let's start there. Uh, uh, we'll start with wow. Vince this time. Would yeah. MJF be a success in the WWE? Uh, right? I, I I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of faith in WWE writers. And, and it seems like MJF has a lot of control over what he does at AEW. It seems I, I think Brian could tell you he would not have that control at yeah. WWE. So so based on that, I I would have to say no. I, I do not think he would have the same success. Brian? So, so yeah, look, I agree. I don't think, because I don't think he would work within the same parameters. Uh, and if right. he didn't, he wouldn't be there. And that right. that's, I also, he's not a huge guy. I mean, his ring uh, in ring work is good. Um, he's not gonna, you know, uh, move the needle or anything. I don't think, uh, but it, nobody does these days. So I'm not really talk, dogging him too much, but yeah, I think mm-hmm. like Vince said, he has a lot of creative control right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and may, maybe they took some away from him and that's where he's at. We'll all see when he comes back and, and where they go. But yeah, I don't think he makes it too far in the WWE. Mm-hmm. Well, he has a, he's not a big guy, but a lot of times people are over because they have a big presence. Do you think that matters at all, Brian? I, I do a hundred percent, but at the end of the day, the bell rings and you gotta, you gotta carry your weight in there. And so, but, but a hundred percent, look, I think Vince in my mind would use him as like a manager, like right. a, somebody a talking like the next Paul Heyman or something yeah. like that. Look, I know it was the kid's dream too. And I met the kid too. I spent a day with him uh, at an autograph signing and he was a pleasure and he was respectful and I loved it. And I, and I loved the kid. Um, we'll just, we'll see what happens when he returns. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You said when he returns, Vince and I talked about that before. Like Vince, why is there even a, uh, what, what are we doing here? You know, yeah, like, I mean, Brian, will tell money you, maker, Brian, Brian, he returns. Brian was the head writer at SmackDown. So Brian will tell you, Brian, it, it just boggles my mind that they're doing this angle, this shoot work, shoot <laughs> to fool all the, mo- we're going to fool the marks. We, we, we're yep. going to, we're going to take his picture off of everything and this, that, and the other <laughs> thing. Okay. Meanwhile, you took one of more, your, your most valuable properties yep. off of the show. Like Brian, like, come, would you, bro, in, in the middle of John Cena's run, <laughs> like, are you, yeah. are we gonna, we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to take him off and yeah. take your, like, how ridiculous is that, Brian? Come yeah, on. Yeah, it is. It is ridiculous because he is one of their better acts. And, right. and uh, look, I watched their show last night because I wanted to see a couple of matches that I was interested in seeing. Uh, the the uh, Zeb Coulter's old team. Uh, I wanted to oh, watch yeah. them p- punch each other, and I also wanted to watch that triple threat tag team. And congrats to the uh, to the Swerve and the, the uh, Limitless One. Mm-hmm. Uh, lim- I think they should be called Limitless Swerve. Oh, I don't know. That just rolled off the tongue, though, right there. That's a T-shirt, dog. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, I, I'm a I'm a sucker for feel good moments. You know, I've told yeah. Vince this before. I'm a sucker for feel good moments. I think the feel good moments are the moments that really uh, pass. You know, goes through the annals of history. You know, I mean, uh, people don't really good. You know, good floppy matches are you know good. Or floppy yeah. matches or a dime a dozen now. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, it's look, it's yeah. all about character and storyline. Absolutely. I don't and I'll say this till I'm blue in the face, and Jim Cornette and every other wrestling purist will hate me for it. There ain't a dime in wrestling. Look at all the people who've drawn the money. 
Yeah. They were the worst workers. <laughs> yeah, I've said that plenty of times. But, 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 but the biggest, the biggest characters. Yep. The, like you said, a big, big persona. Mm. That's got my attention. It gets yep. me emotionally invested. What the car crash flippity doo dah does is make me go, "Oh, that was cool. Did you see that?" Yeah. But yeah. I don't get out of my seat. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and then the the expectation is lowered because you're going to see it next week. And then Wednesday, and then Friday, and then Wednesday. Oh, yeah. And, and, and then not, not only that, Brian, but from a business point of view, Chris, I was reading an article that uh, Khan just did with the New York Post. Bro, he must have blamed injuries like 50 <sighs> times throughout this interview. And I'm like, bro, it's because they're working the way they work. Yeah. So yes. if you don't want 10 people getting hurt every single week, maybe it's time to have a conversation with them, Brian, about the way they're yeah. working these yeah. matches. About how you construct your matches and maybe the producers could help them slow it down a little bit. Yes. But, you know, right. Once you tell them to, the young guys go like, yeah, what does that old booger know? You know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. well, I, I know how to still do it at 53. <laughs> yeah. Along those lines, Brian, like from, from your from what you've seen in AEW, then you know just the the stack of injuries. I mean, yeah. you know, Ray Phoenix, you know, uh, had a had a break, had a straight up break. Uh, you know, he he returned, but you know, broke. You know, uh, had a really bad injury. Yeah. Uh, Brian Danielson, you know, had some issues, perhaps, perhaps a concussion, and then you know, there's there's other things. You know, Jeff Hardy had, you know, he was injured. You know, what I mean, yeah. like there's just a stack of injuries. That are affiliate jungle boy you know he's currently out with an injury there's just a stack of injuries that we see with the type of fast-paced crash course style of ww of aew but that's not the money making style of wrestling oh, I, they're not working smart brian, they're, they're not I, the whole work remember, smarter not harder they're not doing brian it. correct me if i'm wrong i cannot remember you being hurt at all when i was writing for you guys i can't remember <laughs> you ever being out hurt hey and it wasn't because i wasn't uh, aggressive or oh, being, no, not uh, at all. you know, not aggressively at all. attacked by by Brad Shaw and Farouk right. and all those guys. Right. But right. but but I was smart. I yeah. I know what my body can do, and I play the tape through. And yeah. a couple of times I backed out of stuff, and yeah. Billy would call me every name in the book, and he would end up <laughs> doing it and make it on all like the remember the ladder teetering over at the dumpster yeah. match. That yeah. was my spot that I backed out of. I chickened out of. I'm like I don't I don't trust myself to do well that. I get hurt, yeah. you know. But I don't think these kids think that through. I think they just go, hey, I'm going to jump off the roof and you catch me. And yeah. good luck with that. Well, they yeah. well they're looking for the pop, and they're thinking that the the biggest pop is going to be the you know the, you know uh, basically in line for the next push i mean that's what a lot of the philosophy do, is do, do they the real do they really oh, think yeah. that chris or oh, it, yeah. are they looking for that pop because they're looking for that moment of adulation and and love from from the marks i think that's what they're looking for more I think than it's a combination push. of both I if, think it's if a that's what they both. were looking for vince then surely they would slow down and let some of that adulation sink in right? Right? exactly the next <laughs> and not bury the pop man, man i agree <laughs> but, yes. but i'll also say to, to chris's point about uh the biggest pop well then they need to push the ass boys you know yeah. what i mean because they go out there every week and they're the only people with heat right uh, yeah, and, and it's right. kind of funny heat but not so funny when they get heat they still got a little heat and yeah. so it's you know i don't know i watch their show and I, just, I love it that tony's already fussing about injuries like uh hey yeah. man it ain't ballet people yeah. get hurt people's yeah. egos get hurt and they walk away oh my god right in the middle of a storyline yeah this is your life now tony yeah. Khan. yeah <laughs> true very true good point